Tie rod ends. How do they work? How do you replace them? And why should you replace them? Tie rods are made up of two parts, the inner tie rod and the outer tie rod. It's what joins your rack and pinion to your steering knuckle. When you turn the wheel, it turns this rack and pinion and it pushes and pulls this tie rod in and out to cause your car to steer. Now I'm replacing the tie rods on this BMW because the steering has a little bit of play in it. I just finished replacing control arms, oil pan gasket, engine mounts, trans mounts, rebuilding the drive shaft, fixing the check engine light, and this is the last piece to really finish this car up. Now to replace these tie rods, we need to break it loose here at the steering knuckle, and then we need to unthread the inner tie rod from the rack and pinion here underneath this boot. First thing I'm gonna do is break this nut loose. This nut joins the inner tie rod to the outer tie rod, and this is how you adjust your toe during an alignment. I'll explain more in a second. Next, I'm gonna remove this 18 millimeter nut with a half inch impact gun. Next, I'm gonna knock this stud through the steering knuckle with my air hammer. If you don't have an air hammer, you can use a hammer and a punch. Now I'm going to unthread the outer tie rod from the inner tie rod, and I'm gonna count the threads on the way out. That way, when I put the new tie rods in, I'll have the alignment in a relatively decent spot to drive it to the tire shop. 19, 20, 21. Now I'm gonna break the hose clamp off of this inner tie rod boot so we can get access to the nut. Now there's a good amount of oil inside this boot, so we probably have a leaking seal at the rack and pinion. This is something we might have to address in the future. It could also be residual oil coming down from the previous leaks that we fixed. Now before I break this inner tie rod loose, I'm gonna turn the steering wheel all the way to the left. See how I turned the wheel to the left and this entire assembly sucked in? We're gonna do that before we put stress on this nut because that is reducing the amount of leverage and stress we're gonna put on the rack and pinion. If this rack and pinion was extended out further and we're gonna wail on it with a wrench, that force is going to multiply by how much leverage we have sticking out of this rack and pinion. So this is just to help the rack stay healthy while we break this loose. Now, is an adjustable wrench and a cheater bar the right tool for the job? No, but I don't have a wrench that will fit that size nut, and so this will get the job done. And I'm all about just getting the job done with what you got. So you can see this joint here, and it's pretty loose and floppy. We have one joint there at the inner and one joint at the outer. So if those wear out, you can develop play in your steering like what happened on this car. Now if we look at how floppy this old inner tie rod is versus this new one, I literally cannot even move this joint with my hand without it being installed. So it is just a lot stronger, a lot more stiff. It's really gonna help fix the feel of the steering. Now we thread our new inner tie rod in. Now we can move it but it's still really nice and stiff. And tighten it down. Now before we put the outer tie rod on, we need to put this boot back on. If we put the outer on first, we won't be able to get the boot back on the inner. Unscrew that collar, unscrew this nut, slide this boot on over. There's a little cup inside this boot and you need to slide it back to where it sits in its home right there. Now we can put our nut back on and then this collar underneath it. Now we can put the hose clamp on the small side and start threading our outer tie rod back on. Now again, we wanna count the threads. We took it off 21 threads. We're gonna put it on 21 threads. One, two, 20, 21. Then that collar slides down and that collar sandwiches this cut open threaded female portion here on the outer and it locks its position down into place. Now this outer tie rod is spinning with the nuts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this steering knuckle back over and put it up there to hold it into position for me so we can snug this down without it spinning. When we go to the alignment shop, they're gonna put this on the machine, check sensors on all four wheels, and then adjust the toe through this adjustment right here. This is how you adjust toe in the front end on pretty much every vehicle. All right, now we're gonna adjust these hose clamps to the tightest setting that we can get. Now, I don't have the right tool for these types of banded clamps, but what does work is the side cut dikes and so I just get it as tight as I can go get that little hook wrapped in on that hose clamp and then bite this little nub that's provided and that will squeeze and lock down the hose clamp position just like that then we just do the same thing on this one snug that down final step on this side is to snug up this nut the tie rod came with a new one I'm gonna use my half inch impact gun to run it down tight I don't have a half inch torque wrench that will work for this. Now we repeat the same process on the other side.
18. Super floppy. Not as bad as the passenger side, but still pretty worn. Man, this car looks so good underneath for 196K. We have put so much time and effort into this car and it's really coming along nice. If you guys are curious about the other work I've done on this car, I will leave a link in the description for you. I show you how to do the oil pan gasket, engine mounts, transmission mounts, rebuild the drive shaft, check engine light, power steering repairs, intake and exhaust leaks. We really cover it all. I also just got the hood stripped and painted. I replaced the entire front bumper with new trim and new paint and we blend it into the fenders. This thing looks really nice. And if you wanna see how I pulled off all that body work, subscribe to the channel, that video's coming out soon. Good girl, come here, good girl, good girl. We love you so much. And that's how you replace tie rods. Now it's time to go get some tacos and get this thing aligned. You do not want to drive a car without aligning it after replacing tie rods. The front end's going to be all out of whack and you're going to prematurely wear your tires and it's going to handle terrible. Now this video is not sponsored, but I do want to give a quick shout out to one of our viewers. Christian from Open Road Jerky sent me out some jerky to try. Their sweet and spicy flavor is delicious. The mango habanero is on the spicy end. But the coolest part about this company is it's BMW inspired. He sent me out this shirt here, Open Road Jerky. And if you pay close attention, we actually have an E46 here on the back. And I think that's pretty cool. So I just wanted to shout out one of our own. If you guys are interested in picking up some jerky online, check out Open Road Jerky. Dude's hustling, trying to create his own business, and I really respect that. Let's go get some tacos. This thing's driving better already, and I nailed counting the threads because this thing, steering wheel is perfectly straight. It's driving so good. We're still gonna get it aligned though. Hundred and fifteen bucks later, we are aligned and she is driving so nice. So toe on the front left before, negative 0.9 degrees out. They brought it back to positive 0.16. And then on the front right, negative 0.65 degrees out, brought it back to positive 0.11. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Alec and this is Day Off DIY. I like to teach BMW owners how to do their own repairs and maintenance on their own vehicles to save you time and money. So if you think that I earned it, and if you like this type of content, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. I also make short form content on Instagram, so if you're on Instagram and you wanna give me a follow, it is at Day Off DIY. I also have a $500 E46 that I do a lot of content on. I got Big Bertha, 2005 Chevy Silverado with the Duramax 6.6 .6 liter turbo diesel, LLY. I got Kismet, my 1984 E30 318i with 65,000 miles. And I'm gonna be doing a video on the glass soon. And this is my free E90 with an N54. I just finished replacing the oil pan and both turbos and I'll be releasing that video soon. I hope you enjoyed or I hope you learned something new. And as always folks, I will see you on my next day off. Cheers.